joint W2300 is used as an example for dismantling and assembling purposes. By first applying light hammer blows and using a suitable punch, SW28, the circlip is released and removed with circlip pliers. The same operation takes place on the opposite side. Now the yoke is positioned in the vise in such a way that the bearing bush can be partly removed by a few light hammer blows. Suspend the dismantling tool, SW23, in the vise and clamp on the projecting needle bearing bush by using the tool. While hitting the yoke arm, pull out the bush far enough to enable it to be removed easily while turning it at the same time. To dismantle the needle bearing bush opposite, the same operations as described above have to be carried out. After the second needle bearing bush has been removed, the QS yoke is dismantled. To dismantle the second yoke, proceed in the same way. Remove circlips. Subsequently, push bearing bushes out by applying light hammer blows. Then clamp the bearing bushes into SW23 and push the yoke down by applying a few light hammer blows. Care should be taken to ensure that the two cross arms are in full contact with the vice jaws, which are covered by protective aluminum jaws. Here you see the dismantled cross set with grooved and slip-on QS yoke. Assembly takes place in the reverse order. First place the cross member into position, then insert and hit in the grease bearing bush, holding the cross member in such a way that it guides the bearing bush and so that the needle bearings cannot fall out of their seat. By using a punch, hit the bearing bush until it is positioned behind the groove. Insert the circlip and check to ensure that it is positioned accurately. Then assemble the opposite side in the same way. The joint is untensioned by applying a hammer blow to the yoke and assembled last. Now the second yoke 
In this case, the grooved yoke is prepared in the same way. Insert the cross member, hit bearing bushes into position, and secure. In this case, too, the end assembled last has to be untensioned by applying a hammer blow to ensure movability of the joint. After lubrication, the joint is ready to be used. After a yoke has been tensioned in the vise, the joint halves are unbolted. Now the two halves are taken apart and the guiding disc and sliding discs are removed. Prior to assembly, the guiding disc and sliding discs are cleaned. The sliding disc in the flange yoke is arrested by two dots of grease. Then grease the sliding disc and guiding disc by using special grease Molly Coat Paste DS. Make sure that the guiding disc is freely movable. Prepare the second yoke half, or flanged yoke, in the same way. Thank you. 
Then place the two flanges on top of each other. Make sure the yoke arms are parallel and bolt together. It is very important to ensure that the two yoke arms are always parallel. Under no circumstances must they be assembled in an offset position. After lubrication, the wide angle CV joint is ready for use. This picture demonstrates the great freedom of movement of the 70 degree joint. Even in a stationary position, the 70 degree angle must not be exceeded as otherwise the joint is destroyed. With the 80 degree joint, the central part is one unit and can only be replaced as a complete unit. Again, the 80 degree angle must not be exceeded as otherwise the joint is destroyed. To remove the QS lock from the slip-on yoke, it is necessary to remove the retaining ring, to lift off the locking unit, and to remove the securing balls. To fit the QS lock, the lock guide assembly must be cleaned and greased. Insert securing balls. Place locating tongue of locking unit over semicircular hole and slide on carefully. Finally, fit the retaining ring. After checking the QS lock, the slip-on yoke is ready for use. To dismantle the K96-4, First, remove the QC lock. Remove securing ring, retaining ring, and securing balls. Mark position of adjusting ring in the coupling housing. The six nuts are tightened until there is a space of about 2.5 to 3 millimeters between the springs and the adjusting ring. Now the adjusting ring is pushed out of the coupling housing by using a screwdriver. Now the various coupling parts may be removed from the housing and the flange hub. Assembly of the individual parts takes place in the reverse order. 
running ring, friction disc, flanged hub, friction disc, driving disc, friction disc, driving disc, friction disc, set of springs, and adjusting ring. Care should be taken to ensure that the adjusting ring accurately rests against the coupling housing and that it is assembled in the marked position. The torque may be changed by the adjusting ring and by two different assembly positions in the coupling housing. Position 1 gives 70%. Position 2, 80%. Position 3, 90%. And position 4, 100%. When unfastening the spring nuts, make sure that the adjusting ring is positioned behind the securing cams of the springs. Fully release the springs and turn the nuts as far as the bolt end. After assembly of the QC lock, the friction coupling K96-4 is ready for use. To dismantle the K64, First, dismantle the QC lock. Remove ser clip, retaining sleeve and locking balls, lift off torsional spring from the sleeve bore, pull out clamping key, then remove torsional spring and finally washer. Now lift up sealing ring with screwdriver and remove. Then the circlip is removed. The disc is taken out and the complete coupling hub is pulled out of the coupling housing. Finally, the two cams and the spring assembly cam are removed from the coupling hub. Now the dismantling process is completed. To assemble the K64, the coupling housing is greased by using Molly Coat Paste DS and clamped into the vise. Now grease the coupling hub.
grease the spring assembly and the cams and slide into respective bores. Note position of the two cams when turning them clockwise and counterclockwise. Insert pre-assembled coupling hub into the coupling housing. Insert disc and secure by using securing ring. Insert disc and seal. Assemble QC lock. Locate torsional spring Secure clamping key with torsional spring in sleeve bore Place retaining ring into position. Note direction of rotation. Secure by circlip and check functioning of QC lock. The cam switch coupling K64 is now ready for use. To dismantle and assemble the star ratchet, it is necessary to have the dismantling and assembly tools SW24 and SW04. First remove the pull lock, release retaining ring, lift off spacer ring and locking collar with compression spring and remove locking balls. Then remove circlip and sealing ring. The star ratchet hub is pulled out of the housing by using the dismantling tool SW24. Make sure that the release cams which were under spring tension are caught by a cloth.
Assembly begins by greasing the inside of the housing. Use Molly Coat Paste DS. Position star ratchet hub on a corresponding support and grease also. Then the cams and the grease pressure springs, in this case a multi-purpose grease is sufficient, are inserted into the hub row after row. The cams are pre-tensioned by using the assembly tool SW04. Hit the star ratchet hub into star ratchet housing. This process is repeated for each row of cams. The star ratchet torque may be changed by different spring pairs, by leaving out the inner spring, or by changing the number of cams per row. After the last row of cams has been inserted, the hub is pushed into the housing until contact is established. Now insert the sealing ring and the supporting ring and secure by using the circlip. Finally, the pull lock is assembled. After the retaining ring has been fitted, check the pull lock for its functioning.
After lubricating the star ratchet, it is rotated to check it for functioning. The star ratchet K33 is now ready for use. Adaptation of the drive shaft is demonstrated by using the drive shaft of a high pressure baler as an example. The drive shaft is pulled apart. High pressure baler and tractor are coupled at maximum articulation to obtain the shortest drive shaft length dimension. The drive shaft half at the tractor end is fitted. Then the two drive shaft halves are held one above the other and the shortest length is marked on the guard tubes. Now both drive shaft halves are removed to shorten them in the workshop. First remove the safety guard and clamp into the vise. Then the guard tube is shortened by 40 millimeters in excess of the dimension marked. This takes into account the assembly distance required for connecting the tractor. After the cut edge has been deburred and cleaned, the sliding profile is also shortened by the same length as the previously removed piece of the guard tube. Make absolutely sure that the cut edge of the profile tube is carefully deburred and that all swarf is removed from the inside of the tube. The profile tube is then carefully lubricated and the safety guard is fitted.
Then lubricate universal joint and guard bearing. Oil sliding pin and check for functioning. Proceed in the same way for the second drive shaft half. Then the drive shaft is fitted to the implement and slipped onto the power takeoff shaft of the tractor. Also, make sure the anchor chain is suspended loosely to obtain the swivel range of the drive shaft. The Vatashide drive shaft range is designed in the modular system. It is based on the experience of the agricultural machinery industry the user in agriculture, and last but not least, on the experience of Valterscheid. First, remove the pull lock. Remove retaining ring. Lift off spacer ring and locking sleeve and remove securing balls. Now release circlip and remove support ring. Untension pin freewheeling unit and pull hub horizontally out of the housing. By hitting the housing against the work table, the driving plate falls out. Dismantling process is completed. Assembly begins by inserting the driving plate into the housing. Note direction of rotation of driving plate. Grease driving plate inside of housing and hub with a multi-purpose grease. The six plungers provided with pressure springs are lightly greased in the region of the spring and inserted into the hub bores provided for this purpose. Grease plunger heads, insert hub into housing, and clamp into vise. Assemble support ring and circlip. Press hub into casing and locate circlip. Finally, the pull lock is assembled. After the retaining ring has engaged, the pull lock and then the free lock coupling are checked for correct functioning.
After the coupling has been lubricated, it is ready for use. After the pull lock has been removed, the supporting ring is lifted off. Remove sear clip, untension housing, and pull hub out of the housing in the horizontal position. Hold the two driving keys in their position. Note position of leaf springs and driving keys, as this is important for the direction of rotation. For assembly purposes, the inside of the housing, as well as the hub and the driving keys, are greased with molly coat paste DS. Insert driving keys and leaf springs into the grooves of the hub, compress and locate into the housing. Check functioning of driving keys immediately. Clamp housing into vise, insert supporting ring and locate circlip. Insert spacer ring into pulling lock and fit. After fitting the retaining ring, the pull lock and the free wheel coupling are checked for their functioning. The free wheel coupling is then greased and following that it is ready to be used. For dismantling and assembling the component accurately, it is necessary to have the tool SW25. First, the tension pin is removed from the groove yoke. Clamp SW25 into the vise, 
slip the respective removal ring onto the grooved yoke and clamp dry shaft half into the SW25 by means of the vertical threaded spindle. By turning the horizontal threaded spindle, the joint or grooved yoke via the pressure plate and the removal ring is pushed off the profile tube without being damaged. End of dismantling process. To press a joint or grooved yoke onto a profile tube, the assembly bracket is connected to the pressure plate by two tensioning bolts. By turning the horizontal threaded spindle, the yoke, via the pressure plate, the two tensioning bolts and the assembly bracket is slid onto the profile tube until the tensioning pin bores in the grooved yoke and profile tube align. After untensioning the drive shaft joint, the final step is to fit the tensioning pin. Now the drive shaft half is ready for use. Pull drive shaft apart. Use a cross recess screwdriver to unfasten securing screw on safety cone. Turn cone into assembly position. Pull drive shaft half out of safety guard and remove bearing ring from grooved yoke. This completes the dismantling operation. To assemble the safety guard, the profile tube and the bearing groove of the grooved yoke are greased with a multi-purpose grease. Then the bearing ring and the safety guard half are fitted.
Turn safety cone into locked position. Securing the screw until it stops and push together the drive shaft halves. Lubricate guard bearing and subsequently the universal joints. The drive shaft is now ready for use. For assembling the safety cone, the new cone is heated in water to approximately 80 degrees Celsius and pushed onto the bearing cap. All the remaining operations are undertaken during the assembly of the safety guards. For subsequently fitting the reinforcing ring, the slip-on yoke of the drive shaft half is located onto a corresponding support. Grease the first rib of the safety cone and press reinforcing ring onto the safety cone. Refix the previously removed anchor chain and push together the drive shaft halves.